Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle within us the fire of your divine love. Send forth your spirit, and they shall be created. And thou shalt renew the face of the earth. Let us pray. O God, it instruct the hearts of your faithful by the light of the Holy Spirit. Grant it by the same Spirit may be truly wise and ever rejoice in the consolation of the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Mm -hmm. Our Lady Fatima. Pray for us. Saint Nasha Leola. Pray for us. Saint Francisco. Pray for us. Saint Jacinta Marto. Pray for us. All God's angels and saints. Pray for us. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. So we welcome you to our Ignatian Forum. Uh, this is a very special program for many reasons. Number one is that we have, once again, uh, Eric with us and Mary, Father Larry is with us also. And we're going to have a very special guest. We had her about a month ago. And a lot of people enjoyed her, um, her presence with us. And it happens to be Mrs. Joan Maria Broom, who is also my mother. So um, I'm just going to introduce the topic and then we're going to get her on the phone. And Mary has a lot of very important questions that she's going to ask to my mom. And then we'll be intervening with her own. Father Larry will have a few, a few words to say, and Eric as well as myself. But the topic that we really want to address is a topic that has um, fascinated my mother for many, many years. And it's the topic is Our Lady Fatima. One of the reasons why is that uh, my mother has always just loved children. Uh, she has a family of nine. She's got 39 grandchildren, and every time I turn around, there's another great-grandchild being born. No? Mm -hmm. So she's surrounded, in a certain sense, by, by her children, her grandchildren, her great-grandchildren. And uh, because of the world in which we lived, she's uh, very concerned about the future of children. Very concerned. So she has a great love for Jacinta and Francisco, and really wants uh, the children to have their protection such that I've written on this and hope to promote in the near future a novena in which we can consecrate ourselves to the Immaculate Heart of Mary through the intersection of Jacinta and Francisco. So um, this is a topic that my mother really loves and Mary's going to call her on the phone. She's living in Vero Beach, Florida and we really, uh, really trust that this is going to be very, very interesting and very enlightening um, Forum. So, Mary, if you'd like to call my mom, we can sit down. She's there in Vero Beach. It's three, out, three hours later, so it's five o'clock there. And um, so, this is a very, very important topic. Hello. Hello, Mrs. Broom. I'm. This is Mary, and I'm here with uh, your son, Father Ed with Father Larry, with Eric, with Elvira, and we have our uh, live stream family here with us. How are you today? Oh, that's too scary. I'm going to hang up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was just kidding. It's just you and me having a little tea to tea, a little quiet conversation. Well, I, I um, try to get it on my iPad and everything. I can't get it. So anyway. Hello? Hello? Just call her back. She was scared. She hung up. The call has been forwarded to an automatic voice message. Oh, no. <laughs> Your call has been forwarded to... Is that her cell phone? I tell, I, I'll go up and maybe get her other it's phone. It's not her cell phone. It's, it's 772. What's that? What number is that? The second number. The second one is New Hampshire. Is, uh, yeah, is I'll try it again. Your call has been forwarded to an automatic voice message system. Seven. Technical difficulty. We'll be you with talk, you. You can all talk for a minute or two on Fadman. I'll be down with my phone. Call okay. the other phone. Okay. 
So, um, Father Larry. Did you have something you wanted to share on Fatima to help us uh, at this time? Let us say Hail Mary together because Hail Mary, full of grace, grace, the Lord is with thee. thee. Blessed Blessed art thou thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, womb, Jesus. Holy Holy Mary, Mary, Mother Mother of God, God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. (coughs) One of the questions that Father asked was, when did you first become acquainted with the appearance of Our Lady at Fatima? I didn't really decide to become a priest until I was about 29 years old. And what would happen was that I found myself going to pray in a church beneath this beautiful statue. It was the statue of Our Lady of Fatima. And I received consolation. I would go back every night and just begin to pray. So that was the first time I really got to know a little bit of Our Lady of Fatima. Was that just by the... Mom! Okay, we got, we got cut off now, so um, uh, Mary's, uh, she's got a lot of wonderful questions to ask you now. Sorry we got cut off, but uh, she's going to start to address some of these important topics on, on Fatima. So great to have you, and um, good. So Mary's got a series of really good questions, and we're going to be uh, interjecting a little bit too. So great to have you, okay? Oh, okay. <laughs> yes, I, I don't know. Okay. Sure. Okay. Hi, Mrs. Well, Broom. It's Mary again. Yeah. So um, one of the questions that we, um, we talked about and, uh, is that Father Ed said that, yes, can you hear me? I can't hear you. It's too clear. Oh, okay. Let me speak a little louder. Is this better? Do you want, should we try this phone or call the other one again? Maybe try the other phone. We'll try, I'll try the other one again. I'll try it again. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry. That's good. We're good. We're good. Okay. Your call has been forwarded to an automatic. Maybe it's the wrong. Maybe she didn't hang up the other yeah, line. She might not have hung it up. She needs to hang it up. Your call has been forwarded you to need an it? automatic voice message system. You, she has to hang the other line. Five, six, four, zero, eight, four, eight. Hi, yes. I think you have to hang up with the, the landline. Maybe you didn't hang up yet because we call, we just get the voicemail. You are, can, can you hear me? Okay, Mary, let's try to talk loud and uh, louder to you and slow. If you could just raise the volume. Okay. I don't think it's in there. Thank you. Can you hear me now? Yes, that's fine, Mary. Uh-huh. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay, yes, we're very glad to have you, and we're glad that you said yes. Thank you. Uh, so we did want to talk about the rosary. We wanted to talk about Fatima. But one of the things that um, I was interested in was you had to uh, encourage Father Ed to pray the rosary as a child, and he said you took him to a block rosary. Uh, what was that? Can you share what that is? Yes, surely. Well, uh, when I was probably 12 or so, uh, I went with my mother, and what they had was uh, the war was on then, Second World War, and um, they would leave different houses once a week. And in the uh, evening, and uh, the, the, the people who uh, eat, they had different houses that would go to each week, and people would gather together and they would pray the rosary. And uh, the intention and the reason they started it 
was to uh, for the war to end the war because the ship pretty much gotten started. But uh, they used to play uh, the special attention was involved in Russia and the war to end. And so uh, I was the youngest person there. They were all you know women, but some older women like my mom. And um, so each week I used to go. You know I didn't know that much about the better story. But we knew that um, we knew the little she was important, and so that we knew that that was something that I really asked to set them on that was, you know, uh, pretty much as far as what I knew, they knew that the others knew more, you know, the other women. So that was the first, and uh, it spread uh, in the area, so the yeah, houses were, like, blocked, not that far, so it wasn't spread out that way, they called it block those <laughs> so then when I moved, I moved um, after, afterwards, and uh, years later, um, after I was married, I remembered that block grocery. And I thought, well, this would be a really good thing, because where I was then, there were a lot of families and new children. And so I thought, well, you know, maybe we'll just see that a try. And so I... Um, that's the people in the universe really were. Uh, now, that was, I think, uh, in um, West Nile, New York. And I said, well, you know, I'll give it a try. So people were good. It wasn't like a big problem, because that was spread out. But it didn't matter, you know, whether it was two or three, I and mean, there were ladies. And um, a lot of times then, well, when father was out playing and doing it, you know, and he'd see the people coming in and he'd the road in some racing and he'd be there with your little and he would join in the road race. So uh, they did it for, for many years. Each time I moved to a different place, I would start it. But uh, after a while, uh, you know, the people in this didn't, you know, they didn't respond. So uh, that, was, that was something that was a common thing. In those days, and particularly, you know, wars uh, were something that uh, was a, a, a really a great inspiration for people to pray. And at that time, too, rosary was a very important prayer. It was a natural prayer for yeah, uh, people, you know. They didn't as much, you know, we didn't with children so much, but, you know, the uh, adults, uh, with, you know, that, that were into uh, devotion to rosary. Great. So that that was my first exposure to it, and that this time went on because I felt that it was you know something important. So see, I don't think of numbers so much um, because even if there's just a few ladies that came, uh, if they brought a child or two, some of them, to me that was that was sufficient, you know, because it wasn't for the numbers. But it was what was really more from the house because the people that would come were there that wanted to pray the rosary, that they understood, you know, uh, how important it was. So that, that's uh, kind of a, a way I think that, that, that's kind of the way I think. It's not always some numbers, it's what comes from the heart, what's the most important. And for me, I think that's, that's personally the most uh, powerful. You know, I I agree with you. I agree with you on that. It's the um, it's an, it's not the numbers. It's the people that pray are fervent. But you said something else very interesting. I mean, all of it was interesting, Mrs. Broom. But you said you were praying it. Uh, you were twelve when you went with your mother to other people's homes to pray the rosary. You were twelve, and you said it was during the war. And Our Lady of Fatima had asked people to pray the rosary to end the war, and that's what you were praying for, to end the war. So that's very important, isn't it? Well, it, it really is. And of course, we know that the, the prayer, they need to have weapons, but the rosary, <laughs> we know, is the most powerful weapon. It is the most powerful weapon. That's why the evil wants to has over the years trying to uh, destroy the interest in it, and unfortunately, uh, people, and we, people, and we know the truth, I, I, I just could not get over how few people 
uh, even to this day, know the story of Fatima. And I really believe it, it's the evil one's best kept secret. It continues to, you know, and people here, even here in, in the Florida, the in daily mass people, sometimes I've mentioned, you know, Fatima. They didn't know. I mean, in and, and, and two, two different parishes that I belong to, uh, one was our lady of Fatima and several of Massachusetts, and I'm going to uh, uh, ask you uh, another question. I want to comment on that, but I'm going to ask you then uh, another question. But I want to comment on what you said that the Fatima message is a uh, is important that the rosary is a weapon, and then you said that whenever uh, we have a powerful weapon in our hands against evil, the enemy then tries to rob us of that weapon. And you you said you noted that. Um, like in the 50s and the 60s, that people weren't as interested in praying the rosary. And even today, they're not as interested. And you feel that the devil has, uh, you know, is trying to rob us of that powerful weapon. And then I'm going to ask you to speak a little louder if you can. But is that correct what I said, that the enemy's trying to rob us of the weapon of the rosary and he's actually been succeeding? Is that what you were saying? Yes, yes. Uh, I'll try to speak louder too. Um, uh, yeah, well, that's because <coughs> we know his church, so, and he, and he knows ours, so <coughs> when um, something that's powerful, that's what he's going to do. And, and fast forward, uh, that's what's happening today in big time, because uh, what, what's happening is uh, trying to destroy the children, uh, the minds of the children. Well, uh, it, that's his weapon, so that's why... Uh, teaching children about the Fatima method because they're primarily children. Wow. And so it's, it's so important because you see what he's doing, we are counteracting and in our group, Chris, are stronger, but we've always been the, the numbers like this, particularly today, when there's <clears throat> you know, so much of the, uh, the uh, avalanche of, of trying to destroy children. And I know I'm, I'm, I'm going on a little bit, but um, that's why I said I read the book, Dedication and uh, Consecration. Consecration means to make holy. That's what it means. So you, you what he's doing uh, is using the fat of the children to make holy, make the children holy. You make the children holy, they're a little warrior. They're, they're warriors. Because children are, are the strongest. If you can use, the children can influence so much. And so we will use the weapon of children in prayer and the rosary in consecration and, and we'll fight the battle big time, headstrong, with children. And if children will save the world, I believe that. Children will save the world. And that's one of the things that we can see because of Fatima. And, and, and also the children, see, even today, a lot don't even know that much about just and trying to why, but so they don't know the Fatima story. So um, we'll get the children, and, um, you know, I'm, I'm going on a little bit, but I'm giving you thoughts that have been coming to me for quite a while that I've shared with uh, Father Ed before. Um, this is a couple years ago. It's called the thoughts of coming to me, children praying for children. 
children praying for children over and over and I'm like, well, sure, you know, what, what can I do? I'll go to the school, and uh, you know that we're involved in the school, Mr. Goodman, and the school there in New Hampshire, the little Catholic school, there's 200 children there from preschool up to the 12th grade. So I will go there, and uh, we told Mr. Goodman I had really done the beginning of school. Uh, and I uh, was still, uh, the, you know, the strongest uh, supporters. Uh, I will go to the school and tell the headmaster that um, in the children for this year was the 100th celebration of Fatima, and that we we'll need to make sure that there will be an increase in devotion and teaching to the Blue Army to come, have members to come and teach the children at the school. So they did that, and uh, so I thought, that's it. Children come for children. And I thought, and that, and that must be it. Well, then um, what came out uh, into my mind as it progressed was, um, it, it was you know, see, the children were praying, but they weren't praying like poor children. So when, um, that, when the children, the Jacinta and Francis were uh, you know, you know, that was the secret. The secret, the fulfillment, was the thought of the children praying for children. Mm -hmm. And the children, then to be praying to, to the fat of the children, and the fat of the children mm -hmm. praying for them. And so that was, uh, I said, oh, was it timely? That, that's it. So I'm going on, but I'm trying to make the point. Children are powerful. Children are so powerful. Children can change the families. Children will change the world. But they are going to be hidden children that are going to be children that are consecrated and children that will, will pray the rosary. And those are going to be the hidden, the hidden weapons for the triumph that will make the heart. Those her children. So, so let me, no it's, no, it's very good. Everything you said was logical. I, I'm just going to make one quick summary so I make sure everybody hears, and then Father Larry has a response for you, Mrs. Broom. I just want to, what you were saying, Mrs. Broom, is that children are powerful in prayer if they're taught to pray. And that's what Our Lady Fatima appeared to children. And then if children today are taught the message of Fatima and they are consecrated to Mary through the children, Jacinta and Francisco, then Jacinta and Francisco will pray for those children who are consecrated to Mary and those children who are consecrated to Mary, their prayers are going to change their family and change the world. Did I summarize that correctly? Yes. Okay, now Father Larry has a comment. Can you hold it next to you? Hey, Ms. Broom. How are you doing? It's good to hear your voice. Can, can, you, can you hear me okay? Yes, yes, I'm fine. What you said was very beautiful, and I agree with it. The, thank you very much for saying it struck my heart. The two things I liked about, best was the fact that we have to teach children that they have a mother in heaven. That mother is the Blessed Virgin Mary. And that also the children's prayers have great power, especially when they pray for the other children. So teach them that there's a mother in heaven that loves them, is going to take care of them. And second of all, that she wants them to pray and their prayer has great power before God. Thank you very much for talking to us. Okay, he was just he was just reaffirming that um, he loves that um, that you want to teach children that they have a mother in heaven that loves them, and then that children can learn uh, like Jacinta and Francisco, they can learn from them to pray uh, pray for uh, 
the world to pray for reparation of sins and that from that um, the children today will change the world but they need to know they have a mother in heaven that loves them they need to know Jacinta and Francisco yes. love them and are praying for them and then they need to pray um, pray the rosary yes. uh -huh. um, Father yes. did you have or did you want to say something else Father Larry yes, yes. I'll say you tell her you tell her okay you take it okay Okay, so Father Larry is going to say something, and then I'll sh I'll share it with you. Okay, Mrs. Broom. It's very sure. important. Your example is very important. It's a wonderful example to all of us. Like one time in your life, you prayed to God that this great devotion to Mary, His Mother, the importance of the Rosary, and that God heard your prayer and gave the grace to Ed, where he realized that Mary was His mother. It was very important to say the Rosary. And as a child, he began to pray the rosary by himself. That was a great grace. God's response to your prayer for your child. Well done. It's very beautiful to think about that. Oh, he had a very beautiful thought, Mrs. Broom. You'll like this very, very much. And it's true that you loved the rosary. You learned it as a child of 12 from your mother and the women. Then you wanted your son, Ed, to, he was Ed then, to learn to love the rosary and you took him with him to the rosary with he took you took him with you to the rosary block rosary group and he learned to pray the rosary and he learned to love the rosary and that's what you wanted right you wanted him to love it and then okay. from and that was an answer to your prayer for your son that he would love mary and love the rosary and when you took him and exposed him to it he did love it and because of that that's a very important reason he became not only a priest Mrs. Broom, but an oblate of the Virgin Mary. Don't you agree? Yes, yes, that's true. Well, one of the things, and I used to teach this to children, so I, uh, one of the first things I started with, I was brought up out of my statue, and uh, I'd say, well, I'm going to tell you something. You have two mothers. And, you know, the little kids would sit there and think, oh, no, what the <laughs> teacher say? Yes, you have two mothers. Your mother is home. <laughs> Your mother in heaven. Well, let's talk about the one in heaven today. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> what did they do? You know, I thought of the rain, you know, and everything. And out of the little thoughts, so you know, we're there and so <clears throat> it's interesting, really. Well, you know, I'm just going to share the things here. Uh, and she said, Well, you know, um, in your room, you go in, in your room, you have a little place, you can visit that little place. And you can put a little picture of our blessed mother, of Jesus, uh, or a statue. <laughs> and then, um, holy water. And I'm pointing to holy water, how powerful holy water was. Chase the devil away. And they always liked that when you talk about that, <laughs> like that, you know. And chase the devil away. So you get your holy water, and no devil is you got there. And then, um, then you have, you know, your own little place there. And in, in one grade, and then I taught, I think they were, and they were, and they were probably sixth grade or something like that. And, and um, I didn't know, you know, if they would, you know, really respond that much. But it was really funny. One year, years later, this woman came to me. She her son was thinking of being herself. And she said, Mrs. Yes, Clint, you know, you talked at that, you know, at that class, and you told me, and my friend just said, I will place in this room with the statue of a lady in the road, Susan Jesus. And she said, I really remember that. She said, well, he sure had it. He loved that. I said, oh, well, there's one kid. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, kids like, you know, those are things. I'd like to, you know, I, I mean, we're talking about, I'd like to talk about little things about children. Is that okay? Yes, you're going to talk about what the... A little bit louder. Talk, talk a little bit. So I'm going to have you talk a little bit louder. You're going to talk about... So you talked about how you taught them to have a little picture of Mary, a statue of Mary, and a little corner where they could pray. And, and one boy, he was, he was older, he'd grown up, and he still had that place to pray. But now you're going to talk about what? Uh, I guess I'd like to tell little things about, about, about children. About uh, children, okay. He, yeah. Can you speak children. up a little bit? Okay. Uh, and the children, the angels, um, uh, the angels, the children need to know that's another thing that Fatima would bring forth, you know, so powerful and so much about angels. And you know how the angels actually taught them to pray. Yeah. And um, 
they, they, they responded so powerfully with, you know, that prayer of the angel. And it was something that entered into uh, the realization of prayer and the realization of the angels. Well, uh, children um, need to know uh, about angels, and they need to know about their guardian angels. So the guardian angels are uh, something that I think particularly today, if children can learn and then realize the, the uh, importance and the reality that they each have the best friend in the world, which is the guardian angel. The guardian angel has one job, and that's to watch over them and to take care of them and keep them safe. So if they start to learn more about the, their angel, uh, they will be able to you know to call an angel for their help and their help. And I remember uh, when I visited my daughter when she was probably maybe, uh, she maybe six or seven, maybe seven or so, we moved to a different, we moved to New Jersey. And they, she had, there were two girls in the neighborhood that she used to play with me. And, uh, you know, how girls sometimes, you know, they, they, they want, you'd be friends with two and leave one out. So uh, Mary, um, you know, Vicky came in one day and she was, you know, kind of sad. She thought herself, she was out playing with the girl. I said, well, did you see what happened? And, and she said, well, they didn't want to play with anymore. She said, but it's okay. She said, all I did was I got on my bike and I rode my, rode my bike around with my guardian angel. And I thought, yeah, you see, she was in a situation where she, you know, mm-hmm. you know, she was just kind of wanted to, uh, you tear off against nothing. But she had known that, you know, the guardian angel was there. So I'm pointing out that guardian angels, children, can't, can never be their best friends besides them knowing they can they watch over them. Now, I have another story. That, let me, about that's very beautiful um, that Mary, your daughter, knew she had a guardian angel and that because of that she could ride her bike with her guardian angel even if the other two girls didn't play with her. So very powerful. You have another story? Uh, yeah, I was thinking of, uh, uh, this is a, when I read, I guess I read this, it was a true story from a magazine. What was the, the baby was Can you speak up just a little? Yeah. yeah. This woman was pregnant and uh, was her second child. And she um, had a um, little, it was a little boy, and then it was, the baby was a little girl. So that she, the mother used to let the little boy uh, feel her, her, her tummy, you know, and what the little boy used to like to do was sing. He would always sing, sing to the baby. And uh, he would sing and sing and sing. So then came time for the woman to have a baby. And uh, she went and had the baby at the hospital, but the baby started to die. And uh, the little boy, they didn't want him to come. Because she, they didn't want him to come to the hospital to see her, because she, she was she was dying, and um, so the nurses and all they said no. Well, finally the little boy just kept pleading, the pleading, and uh, the baby was just about almost dead. I guess it was dead. So they finally let the little boy in because he persisted so much, and he went in and he waited. Right next to the baby, and he starts singing the song that he always sang to her. And he sang and he sang and he sang, and she woke and her eyes opened up, and she it had full color, and she was, you know. But what the other fact is, you know, it's the story of being about children, how children, uh, they, they're powerful. I'm telling stories that how powerful are children. And uh, so, you know, these are, these are things that, uh, stories that children, uh, they, they need to know and they need to understand how powerful they are and how helpful their angel, you know, guardian angel is. 
That was a beautiful story. Did that little girl live or, or did she die? But she she opened her eyes when the boy sang. She lived. She lived. Okay, the boy sang and she not only opened her eyes, she actually lived. She lived. And beautiful. She started coming back, you know, uh, because of the little boy sang and sang and sang. And that was a voice. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. That was a voice she knew, right? She knew the voice, yes. Uh-huh. Because she, the, 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 children, the baby can hear in the room. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The baby can hear. So uh, that was something that was so soothing that then that baby did. And on the other side, all the bad music. You know, I'm not going to say anymore. You understand. I understand. We don't have to say anything more about the bad music, but you're right. It has an effect, too, and that's not good. Yeah. Exactly, because he, uh, music, music enters the soul. Mm. Music enters the soul mm. and it stays. Okay? Mm. You've got good music entering in, and what does that do? It forms and it stays. Well, what it, I don't have to say the opposite, but that's what, again, see, what the evil one will use, we have to use the, the other side, see. So what he's done is he's taken bad music, and, and we know I don't have to say any more than that. The point is there. But um, if you don't mind, I have a lot of little things about angels that I just wanted to tell. Is that all right? Yes, sure. This is your day. With, with, with Fatima, um, one other thing about angels, too, is that... Um, um, the angel said, I just he told the children, I'm the angel of Portugal. So I don't know, maybe every, maybe everybody knows this, sometimes it, but I, I doubt it. We have an angel, each country has an angel. We have an angel in America, the angel of America. We need, people need to know about it and pray like crazy to the and they're American angel, the angel that is, his one job is to protect America. And there was um, the uh, revelation from Our Lady of, the, of America that's, you know, has been recognized through the vision. And um, that angel uh, of America uh, is, 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 wants to be known, and in, in this lady, this sister, uh, was supposed to spread that message about uh, the angel of America. So um, <laughs> it's just another thing that uh, about the angels that we've got. We've got all this help that we, you know, that a lot of people don't know. But anyway. Um, Those are great stories and sto- good stories about angels. We do want to. Um, we do want to. Uh, call on the angels to to help us you know god gave us the angels to help us and i i love how you talk about that and emphasize that as well um what what would you say mrs broom strikes you most about our lady's appearance at fatima what was your question Mary? what strikes you most about our lady's appearances at fatima well i guess um maybe um I think probably uh, her, her, uh, um, her most her interest in children. That's what I think is her interest in children. And um, I guess I'm, I'm really caught up with this idea because as I started, children will save the world, and uh, there's secrets of the things that Our Lady does, and that that to me is one of them. And um, the, 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 because children can get the attention and get attention, and um, I think Our Lady uh, maybe she, she maybe used the that of the children uh, to uh, to bring them this message to the world, and we threw the rosary, but she used children because I I seem to feel strongly about. The power of children, and um, I, I, I just it has been so much on my mind and heart lately, and I think that's how it was. And she, she appeared like she was about fifteen, 
And uh, that would be very attractive to the children, you know, a young, uh, beautiful, a very young, you know, uh, uh, woman. And so I think that has really just, that is kind of one of the things that it comes to me. You know, I guess, I, you know, because I have children, <laughs> I have children <laughs> yes. but I, I really believe that, uh, that, that, that uh, you know, so many things that, that they can, they can accept. Well, I, I think children, mm-hmm. uh, children, children can change the family. You, you know, she, um, the mothers, the children, um, the mothers are they're going to give it. A fair amount of attention to children because it's their nest. That's that's their nature. But a, a child can soften the man's heart, the father's heart, if they do. If they go to the father and they tell that father, "Oh, I love you. You're so strong, and I love the way you you take care of my family, whether they do or not." To say it anyway, to him. <laughs> you know? Yes, yes. And um, uh, in, in families where I mean, the men take a back seat, they don't, you know, especially with the children, they um, they uh, uh, they need that. That I remember when I used to teach, you call up to see people, you know, you want to talk to the father if there's a problem with your in the CCD stuff. And, and if the father answered, and I'd say, you know, this just makes it so funny. Oh, just a minute, I'll get my wife. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. No, no, no. Hey, wait, 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 wait. wait. <laughs> so, um, the thing is that uh, if we, we get children more aggressive to uh, the tenderness of their father, oh, I, I think some, something about him, you know, Ask them things. Uh, or they just say, you know, something to this. When you say, you know, fair for me, because that little boy at school has been mean to me. Well, maybe the prince said, yeah, because he probably won't beat him up. But I mean, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Uh, uh, the point is there, uh, I think that they can be, see, what we're doing is we're putting the power back in children's hands. And, right. Uh, not back in, you know, they, to put it in. Uh, so those children can can uh, really, really impress the family. You know, be through prayer and through the rosary and uh, through, through being uh, tenderness, particularly want them to reach out to the father. Because they, the men, they think they may, they may give the appearance that they don't care, you know, about. But you see a little child, like that is a little, it was a story, it was a man in church, in, in the store, walking, and he, he just had this real grumpy look on his face, and, and a little child, and she said, is there something wrong? Are you sad? And he looked at her, this is a little baby, he said, no. She said, well, your face looks like it. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so, you know, I mean, he started to laugh. So, it's, I Making the point that children are powerful. They're so powerful. They just have to be led and taught in prayer for, you know. So How what um, advice would you give parents then? Um, it sounds like it sounds like I mean parents have to encourage this in children, right? Can encourage think, prayer. Parents have to encourage prayer in children, right? And what would you give what advice would you give to parents? And what about the parents? What advice or what, what advice would you give to parents? What would you oh. tell parents to oh. help them oh. uh, form children that like you're, to be prayerful like you're talking about? Uh-huh. Well, the children, get them, um, it helps them, uh, I'll give them each a rosary, tell them, you know, that this is really a special uh, gift from our blessed, their mother in heaven. I'm not blessed their mother in heaven. I like this that. Is gift, this is a gift that our mother in heaven gave to the world. Now, here's your rosary. And it's a special rosary. You know, they can get roses, they can get roses. And then, um, you can take the, you know, give the rosary to the child and say, now, 
you know, teaching them how to pray, pray the rosary and say, you know, to even learn, you know, however that's what situation the children are at the age of. And they say, well, um, when you let us pray this, let us say this prayer for the daddy. Let's pray this prayer for Susie. Yes, you know what? This little boy at school, you know, he tells him he hurt himself. This other one there was hitting someone. Come on, let's say a prayer for them. And this is a story that's just coming to my mind. Jim, when he was um, in high school, he, um, there was a, from home. we talked a lot about dinner there. There was a public school, and he come home and he said, this teacher went on, blah, 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 and he went on to everything that she was saying that was just, just the opposite of what we think. And so um, he would go on and on with it, and then we just listened to him, and if it was something he needed advice and stuff, he would tell us. But then in the evening, when we said our family rose free, we would, one people, I can tell them we'd make the petition, and when it came to Jim, he said, and for teacher or whatever, he could have made it so <laughs> he ended up praying for her. I thought that was really neat. That was so, beautiful. That was beautiful. Yes. yes. So, uh, and that, you know, was just one of the things where, uh, you know, as you think of a lot of different little things that come on tonight. But, um, but I think, you know, men, the, the kids have to get to the men. They have to, because the mother's going to be, I think, she's always going to need someone who uh, uh, has uh, some uh, attention to the child. But uh, they, need, they need the father. You're they saying maybe the maybe if the children ask the father, Father, will you, or Daddy, will you pray the rosary with us, that might... That might uh, yeah. that might encourage yeah. the the daddy to participate more. Is that you're seeing that kind of thing? Yes, yes. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. It's a mm -hmm. ghost, a ghost on. You know, dad. Would you just say one hell Mary like this? You know, or something like that. It's just so kind of a uh, kind of thing. Do things. You put this. You tell the child. You need to teach the children to do those things and uh, if in situations where they're not receptive to uh, yes. and receptive to prayer. So, um, you know, just in the trial, even the, the mother, if she tell her earlier the trial, she asked Daddy to say one prayer with us. You have to go real small. You have to really start small, you know. <laughs> See, that's your wisdom that I don't have. And your wisdom, I said, well, ask him to pray a rosary. No, let's ask him to pray a Hail Mary with us tonight. <laughs> that's beautiful. See, that's your experience speaking. That's your experience. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Uh, Father Larry, did you have anything you wanted to comment on? For Or Father Ed, you want to comment on something um, that your mom is saying? Yeah. Mom, those are really... Got the phone upside down. Uh, those are really beautiful, beautiful comments. Um, what what really struck me is when uh, Pope John Paul II, he was going to beatify them, and then Pope Francis in the year 2017. But uh, when he beatified Jacinta and Francisco, who you really love very much, and I think that they're kind of the model for children today, is that John Paul II canonize them, but they were really different. It's like uh, you have your family of nine children, and not a, all of us are very, very different. We all have our own, our own uh, virtues and our own defects, too. I have to admit that. But uh, John Paul II called Jacinta and Francisco two different names. Francisco was a little mystic, which means that he was a little prayer warrior, and he liked to spend a lot of time in silence in, uh, in front of the Blessed Sacrament and to console uh, the hidden Jesus. So he was a little mystic. So he, even though Francisco was just a little boy, he already was inclined to prayer to see Jesus in the tabernacle and he really wanted to visit him and console him, kind of like what we want to do tomorrow for the Sacred Heart of Jesus. We want to console the Sacred Heart of Jesus tomorrow. But also Jacinta... Jacinta, uh, she died, she was only nine years old, not even ten, and John Paul II called 
Jacinta, a little victim soul. And that is really extraordinary because she was a victim soul at such a young age because she recognized uh, that, that suffering has value. Suffering really has value, uh, not in and of itself. Suffering has value only when we're able to unite our suffering to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And Jacinta, want, she had great love because um, love means we, we will the good of the other person. And the greatest good we can will for another person is that they be saved for all eternity. So I, I think you know, your conversation was just uh, wonderful. We really love to listen to you. And, uh, but I think, I, I think it has to be said that children, we, we, sometimes I, I think parents don't want to have the children to pray because they, you don't want to turn them off toward God. Children can pray, but they have to be taught, okay? As the, you said, the angel taught the children how to, how to pray. Children can pray, but they have to be taught. And also children can offer up sacrifices. I remember when we were brought up and raised in, um, both Advent and Lent, we would always, we'd always, uh, be invited to offer up sacrifices. Um, I remember both in Advent and Lent. And I remember in Advent, you probably remember that you got us up. You got us up very early, and this is not California, this is New York. You got us up, and it was sometimes 10 degrees, and uh, you would get me and Mike to get into the car. And I remember when I was in the car, I was freezing, and it was so cold, and we were asking, when is the heater going to get on? Come on, it's so cold, no? But uh, I remember that you really invited us. You were the one that said, come on, why don't you offer up sacrifices? And then you put the crash scene. And they had the child Jesus there in the crash scene. He didn't have any hay on top. And you were saying, well, well if we don't do sacrifices, then the little baby Jesus is going to be cold. And after about uh, 10 days, there's so many pieces on hay on him, I thought he was going to suffocate because we did, <laughs> we did so many sacrifices. But I, I, I think your conversation is so important because the children are being attacked, the politics as well as education are trying to really poison their minds. So I think now more than ever, we have to try to bend over backwards to try to save them because I think they're in, their, their lives are in jeopardy and we have to do all we can uh, to consecrate them to Mary and Jacinta and Francisco. Not to forget that these three children, they couldn't even read and write. Uh, Lucy eventually is going to read. But Jacinta and Francisco, they're among the, the youngest children that were ever canonized. They could never, never even read and write. So I think that there's a lot of beautiful things that we can say about them. Father Larry's going to say a few words now. Okay. okay. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, I like that. That's really good. What you said was, uh, really, what, uh, what you said, you can translate for me. What you said was very beautiful. Father uh, Larry, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say it closer to the phone. So he said, what you said is very beautiful, and he's going to go on, and I'll, I'll share with you what he says. It taught me something, and I thank you. So, okay, oh, I did talk fast. Okay, Father Larry has some comments, but I'm going to um, say them because I'm closer to the phone. So he said, uh, what you said was very beautiful, and now he, as he tells me something, I'll tell you. So let, let's it, see what the next thing It taught me thing something is. I had not thought about. All right, you told him something, or you said something he had not thought about. The power of the, pr the prayer of children. The power of the prayer of children. We, we live in a society where there's not a lot of love in most families. We live in a society where there's not a lot of love in families. And when a child prays for the family. And when a child prays for the family. Love enters the family. Love enters the family. And that's a beautiful thing. And that's a beautiful thing. And that's greatly needed today. And that is greatly needed today. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So that was Father Larry, and, and that's, he's reinforcing what you said or affirming what you said, Mrs. Broom, that children's prayers are powerful, and we love need to teach the them to pray. The love the family. That love enters the family because of the children's prayers. So we need to teach children to pray for their families because that is how love will enter their families when families are not getting along. 
very, very powerful and very beautiful. You agree, Mrs. Brune, I know, right? You agree with that. Those are beautiful, beautiful thoughts. Uh, and it does remind us that um, Jesus said, unless you become like a little child, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. Children have that openness, that uh, their heart is open, their mind is open, they're willing to learn, they're willing to love, they're willing to give, and uh, that's something for all of us to imitate. Um, and so what your, your point today is that we need to help our children know Jesus and Mary, love Jesus and Mary, um, and, and pray the rosary for, for the world, because that's going to change the world. Is that correct? That's right, yes. Pray the rosary will lead into all of these, these, uh, these things that they need to know other than reality. Right. Yes, I think in his sin. I'm sorry, what was the last thing? Could you. What was the last thing you said? Go ahead. I want to think. There was a. This is a St. Paul, and we. When my kids were younger, they made cake. And they had this one cake that was a children singing the Ten Commandments and a little comment after each little commandment. 
everything. And so, you know, the, these things again to the music, the good music, and, uh, and, and I don't know how we can connect it today, but the point of uh, children, uh, they were singing the Ten Commandments, and we think Francis Xavier when he went to India was trying to print it in the text. And uh, so, anyway, he, he didn't know the language, so he got the children. He learned the language from the children, and then he taught the catechism to the children uh, through singing, and they'd go home and sing. And then the, ch the children would be catechizing the parents. <laughs> there you go. That's a perfect summary of everything we talked about today, isn't it? That's a perfect and beautiful summary. I'm going to let um, your, your son, I was going to say your father, he's my father his father boomed to me, but I'm going to let your son um, speak to you a minute before we have to end. Um, thank you very much. Those are very, very beautiful, beautiful insights. I think you inspired so much, and we are so happy to have you with us on the forum then, and your love for Mary, your love for children, your love for God are very, very inspiring. And um, so right now, um, I'm going to give a blessing, and then after that, we're going to move into another program. We're going to be playing the, playing the Chapel of Divine Mercy. So God bless you and love you, Mom. And um, I'm going to give the blessing to all. And of course, you in Florida. The Lord be with you. And with, with your, your spirit. spirit. Thank you. Thank May you. Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, God Thank bless, you Mom. For me, Thank you for letting me on. I know I'm yeah. talking, but anyway, um, thanks for letting me in. I, yeah. I, I appreciate it. It was excellent. Thank you. God bless and love all you, right. Mom. Bye. All right. Bye-bye now.